Logitech Z533 speaker with subwoofer. Okay, let's get into this. First, I'm gonna start the video off by saying this, this is what I'm reviewing right now. It came with a three and a half millimeter auxiliary wire and well, this is just about the crappiest wire I've ever seen. I mean, it's 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 useful because well, I'll get to that later, but if, if you have a better one, like any other one, any other, even if it's like 10 feet long, like just I suggest using another one. I'm going to go over how it looks for like a minute. They're stylized, okay, and I understand looks are subjective, but personally, I love the way these look. I mean, they match really well with the desk. It's not my desk, it's uh, my dorm room, so, but I mean, it matches, so I think they look nice. And please ignore this ugly, I did that, I'll get to that a little later. The way you control this, which is important because you're going to want to, is this neat little knob. It's really nice, actually. It's a really good volume knob. I don't normally have to go past halfway because I use a preamp, but if you don't have a preamp, you don't have to worry because you can... Basically, what this is doing, this is just taking over this thing's job and also being a headphone app, but that's besides the point. And it's, it feels really nice. I mean, it's plastic right here. It's plastic all around, actually, but it's got heft. It has a headphone out, so, well, again, if you don't have a preamp with a headphone out, this can be your headphone out. Another auxiliary in, and it is also the power. You click it on, it's on. There's a white light. Yeah, I heard the speakers click on, and there's a bass switch. Um, I use it up all the time, not because I'm a bass freak, but because, well, I'll get to that later. It's a nice control knob. Now, let's get to the actual speakers themselves. Well, first of all, uh, this is my first speaker review ever, you know, so if I'm a little disorganized, forgive me. It's interesting about these speakers, and let me pull the wires out is that they connect to the sub via RCA, and this is the right one. They're indicated blue for left and black for right, which is interesting, but I mean, I guess they just didn't want you to mix up the input, which again, the input is coming from my preamp, so that's a really nice wire. This is also nice, I guess. So, um, let me just, I'm probably not going to be playing any music anyways because I don't want to run the risk of getting copyright strike and also I'm not sure how good the microphone is picking me up because I am, I'm not recording with the Logitech mic because it's kind of, it's a, uh, uh, the quality is questionable. Some people like it, I don't, nah, whatever. I'm going to have to disconnect this anyways. Speakers, 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 they actually got a good bit of heft to them I'd say that's like three pounds I don't know they probably have the specs somewhere but that doesn't really matter they're not gonna break anything and also not gonna fly away um, they're not ported at all this is a sealed container as far as I can tell so there's a big L and R on the back so you don't get them mixed up Logitech, this shiny bit, while I think it kind of looks cool, it is a fingerprint magnet. So if you have kids that touch things, that's going to be a thing. I don't really care though. The driver is, it, it's small. I mean, it's a computer speaker, so what do you expect? My pinky is bigger than it. Then again, I have big hands, so take that as it is. They, they're kind of short, well, again, computer speakers they're not really meant to be big or whatever they actually have a nice size and the reason I have my monitor this low is because they're that sharp I want the center image you know wherever the center image is and speaking of 
center image. These actually do image okay, I guess. I mean, they, they're not going to image like $200 speakers or my $200 headphones. But, I mean, they do pretty well, by the way. Um, on the Logitech website, ooh, that's a cool effect. Uh, they're about $100. I got them from Best Buy for $100. You can actually find them on Amazon for used and new from uh, 60 to whatever. I'll link to both of them in the description so you can look at that. Okay, now that I'm done just talking about the speaker, let's talk about this thing. I'm going to disconnect it as much as I possibly can, but I can't oh, ignore this. This is just my, my beautifully machined aluminum USB hub that I love. I can't connect this oh, all the way because it has, guess what? A connected power cord. I don't know about other people, but that's just kind of annoying. I'm sorry, this isn't a wide angle lens, so I'm not sure how much you're seeing. Forgive me for that. Okay, let's just look at it. Well, you can see what I've done to the speaker. It doesn't look like that. I ripped it apart because it's my speaker, well, my sub, and I don't really care. Don't think it's gonna come like this. It was actually really hard to get this off. I had to pull and get scissors, but then again, I have crappy scissors. Uh, you see that? That thing? That That's the driver. Uh, I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty small, especially for a subwoofer. Now, in my experience, the only computer speakers I've dealt with was the Logitech Z3. Let me see if I can pull up a picture of that. Logitech Z3. Yes. Um, God damn it. I got a virus or something. I don't know. The, that. That is about a 7 inch driver. So that to this is... How big is that? I don't know. What, like five and a quarter or something. It's probably bigger than four. But it has a grill. It does have a cloth thing, so, you know, mm, protect it from dust or whatever. And this will protect, again, like a kid from just destroying it if you're worried about that. It's, it's small, and I think, I'm, at least I'm pretty sure, that is why I have to leave this thing all the way up because it claims 120 watts peak 60 RMS and let's see I think I can scroll down to the bottom yeah the satellites get 15 watts and the subwoofer has generally about 30 watts now it's not really a lot but it is enough to drive these now, I have an EQ on my computer, so I do equalize it because this, I feel like it just doesn't pull out enough power to really, you know, boom, I guess. But when I EQ it, it can definitely produce all the low end I want. Now, I'm not a bass head, but, you know, if I'm like watching a movie or something, I do like to ha have it have a little more rumble and then again having it on the desk like this with the port facing me by the way probably isn't the best place to put it but given my situation I don't have many other places to put it but if you put it in the right spot you could probably get away with how much this pulls out unless you're a bass freak then you'll probably think it performs a little lackluster then again, I know people who are bass freaks and they're true masochists. Okay, anyways, now that I've talked about the structure, and again, I'm probably going to put time codes to when I really talk about certain things. Okay, sound. How do they sound? Because that's important, right? They're speakers. What are you going to use them for? Are you going to use them for music? Are you going to use them for general use, which is 
what I use them, movies, whatever, they're, you know, they're computer speakers. So I wouldn't rec recommend putting them in a living room or a big room because look at that. That's tiny. I mean, they're probably better than your TV speakers, but still, the, these are meant for this close distance. They're even angled, so they point up at you. Though, really, if you want a taller monitor, like I prefer my monitor to be about this height, you might want to prop them up on something. If you're not, like, really anal about placement, then you can get away with it. Okay, now, if you noticed, there's no tweeter. I'm assuming this is supposed to be a full range driver, meaning this takes care of everything except for bass, because that's what this thing does. And let me mention this right now before I forget. There is RCA input and RCA output to the speakers. That actually has a cutoff, I know, because I took the RCAs out and I put them to my headphones, not these, my other headphones, and no bass, all the bass disappeared because the subwoofer was taking care of all of it. You can unplug the speakers and still hear everything. It cuts off at about 100 hertz, I didn't really measure, but it has to do that for these speakers because they're so small, they can only have so much movement, even bigger drivers, they can only move so much to compensate for whatever signal you're throwing at it. Here they are. So taking away the bass, the low end, allows these to take care of the mid-range and the treble. And speaking of treble, even though there's no tweeter, they do reduce a considerable amount of highs. You know, I get a tone generator, frequency test, and they get pretty high. They do get up there. Again, probably not going to be as pristine as like more expensive speakers or powered monitors with a dedicated tweeter, but that's the sacrifice for getting this system, I guess. Though you could get other computer speakers that do have a tweeter. Definitely. No one's stopping you from doing that. Sound. When it comes to bass, really, I'm not judging these, I'm judging the subwoofer because it takes care of all of the bass. It, like I said, maybe it's just because it's a smaller driver that it doesn't normally produce a lot of bass unless you EQ it and then crank this all the way up. But let me show you, by the way, this system I have. I have it disabled right now, but I put um, at 63, this is, by the way, these are in decibels from like, I don't know if you can see them, like from 40, 60, 100, basically it's just a little bump, and that bump doesn't really affect these so much, because if you turn this all the way down, it pretty much disables the subwoofer, and turning this on and off didn't really seem to have much of an effect on these, so... That's just to affect this, and then I can just control the bass as much as I want. Music listening, whenever I do this, I keep it at half. TV, movies, up, just because I want a little bit more of a rumble, a little bit more of a boom if there's an explosion. Also for gaming, because these are not half bad for gaming. I mean, I still prefer to use my headphones if I'm going MLG, but I don't really do that. I'm more of a, more of a fun player for the experience and I don't care about footsteps and also I play Warframe I don't know if footsteps really matter there but anyways bass it's it's a subwoofer and I will say this the subwoofer has the amplifier for the drivers it it's probably I don't know if it's bad amplification but there's a amplifier hiss you get that from most things but like, they're not plugged in right now, but and I'm not sure if you could hear it anyways with the way I'm recording this, but you can hear it from like this distance, and the volume doesn't affect it only when it's turned off. But when it's on, there's a fuzz, there's a hiss. You barely notice it, but 
it's there. You have to kind of listen to it when it's quiet. So that's just something to look out for if you're worried about it. Um, bass quantity. You know, I have my quantity versus quality. Well, you can control the quantity here and with an EQ and stuff. And messing with an EQ, you have the benefit of it not really affecting these. So it's like a separate entity and you can do whatever you want. Quality of the bass, I mean, it's, it's okay. It's good, not as good as like a home theater sub or something, not as good as a seven inch driver or a 10 inch or a 12 inch or a 15 inch or a 20 inch, probably not because that's just, I don't know, they probably exist somewhere, but you take it or leave it. It's the way it is. These are $100, you get them for 60 I guess. Mid-range, that's when these actually come into play, these little satellites, not the kind that orbit, but you know, I'm trying to be funny. Mid-range, that's like vocals and like, instrumentals if you listen to classical you know it's the middle of the keyboard basically they're good you know they're they're okay um i don't think they're as good as my 200 dollars akgs or even my 60 dollar phillips shp 9500s but then again that's comparing a headphone to a speaker but they, they're okay, they sound good, they perform, they definitely sound better than the Z3, so, you know, you take, you know, consolation in the fact that they're at least getting better in quality, they sound good. I don't know how they compare to, like, the Logitech Z whatever's they are, uh, these, the 623s. These were at Best Buy at the same time as these, and they were the same price. They were both $100, but I went with these for a specific reason, and I'll get to that later. It's like a life hack, I guess. But anyways, going back to these, the, do I say that too much? Z533s, the Zs, okay. Mid-range, vocals, good. Again, they do image pretty well. Whenever I'm listening to something with a vocal track, as long as it's like stereo in the middle, they do sound like it's here, generally. And then something plays from the left, you hear it to the left, something plays from the right, you hear it to the right, left, right. It's, they're good. They're not like some little speakers that I've heard where it's just like, yeah, all the sound is definitely coming from these. These don't do that. They're actually pretty good at creating an image in front of you, wherever you're looking. Okay. Treble? Hmm. Now, they don't have a dedicated tweeter, but they don't necess they don't really lack in treble. They're not bad. They're okay. They're good. Operative word being okay. They're just computer speakers. And I say that because you look at other things like powered monitors. For example, these Mica in the PB42Xs, sorry, which is the powered version of the MB42Xs. You see, these are, they're sort of like this. They're sort of like these, except it removes the subwoofer and gives you bigger and better speakers with a bigger driver than this. They're a four inch with a carbon fiber woofer and silk dome tweeter. So it's a two way instead of these being a one way with a point one. They're a 2.1. This is just a 2.0. But, you know, that's the sacrifice you have just the one way so the highs might not be as good but they're not lacking okay they're good are they worth a hundred dollars yes if it was just these 
with like a little amp, I would not say they're worth $100. But adding a subwoofer, making it a 0.1, it is really, really beneficial. Even if it's not a powerful subwoofer, even if it's not a really great subwoofer, it still is so beneficial because if these had to take care of everything, these little satellites, it would be over. I would not recommend them. But even though it doesn't produce maybe a lot of room filling, now I do kind of have a big space, but I'm not trying to fill the room. But the fact that whenever I turn this down and they sound bad because there's absolutely no warmth, turning it up just makes it sweet. It just, it's good. They're enjoyable to listen to. Not super analytical, not like anything too serious. They're not that expensive, especially if you get them on Amazon compared to like other things with a subwoofer. They're good. They're definitely worth um, 100, wait. Yeah, free shipping on orders over $50. I'd recommend getting them from Amazon because you could probably get them cheaper. Just don't buy them from someone like me who ripped the freaking grill off just to see the driver in action, which I can't see it move. Now, remember when I said something interesting, how there's going to be a little life hack? Let me bring back the PB42Xs. Now, one of the reasons I personally decided to start off by getting the 2.0 little multimedia things with a subwoofer. And the reason, again, why I didn't get these, because, well, there's no pictures at the back. Ugh. Let me, let me see. Okay, yeah, these. You see the way this is set up? I'm not, uh, it's the Z623s. Yeah, okay. You see those the way this is set up? This is the left speaker. It's an auxiliary. I mean, pff, an RCA, like one of these. But the right speaker is this multi-pin, is a 16-pin, I guess? Because the way that those are set up, the way these are set up, is that all of the controls are on one of the speakers, which means it has to have some sort of weird setup in order to be able to control the volume and the bass and the power and have, I think it has a headphone output and an auxiliary input, something like that. The reason I didn't want to get one of those, and when I was looking at those two in Best Buy and I decided to go with these, the, the, the 533s is because of that. RCA output, that comes into play when you want to upgrade to, let's say, Micah PB42Xs, X stands for crossover, by the way. Why does that matter? The reason I didn't want to just get these right off the bat is because they're probably better than these. They probably produce more volume. As a matter of fact, I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say they're definitely better than these. They sound better, they perform better, they're just better in every aspect, except for bass, because of the dedicated point one that you get when the you get the two point one system. Not these, the 533s. I need to expand my vocabulary. But it has a dedicated point one. Meaning, you can EQ and mess with the bass all you want, and it's not going to too heavily affect the other things, like mid-range and treble. Because if you started EQing these to try and get more bass out of them, and I think they go down to 60 hertz, which is pretty good for a 4-inch driver. But if you started EQing it to try and get more bass, that's all you have to play with when you have powered monitors. And the reason why is because it's only one driver. Only so much driver movement can be allocated to certain things. And bass is definitely one that takes up a lot of movement because it's big, 
slow movements and having to incorporate that into mid-range and well, maybe not treble and maybe not even the top of the mid-range because there's a tweeter but still you start messing with the bass trying to pump it up to get more you can degrade the sound quality of the other things excuse me but if you have this you can do whatever you want to the bass set i'm just going to say 100 hertz and below and it's not going to affect this at all and this happens to have rca outs and you know what these things have rca ins meaning if you have a source any source like a Mica Origin G2, or even if you're running an auxiliary in, which, by the way, one auxiliary in, two auxiliary ins, and RCA in, so you can run a lot of different inputs at the same time, which is good. You can run your phone, something else. You can even buy a Bluetooth adapter, and suddenly these are Bluetooth. Bam. And you can run it in and the RCAs out into these and then suddenly your PB42Xs are now being run with a subwoofer. Bam. So suddenly they can have more bass now. Really the only issue I can foresee, well the only two issues I can foresee is that remember when I said these have like a hiss, like an amplifier hiss. It might carry over to these. It might not be the cleanest amplification, but I can barely notice the hiss with these, and I'm not really sure if it'll hiss more with these. Uh, the, the mic is... Sorry. But you can... I think it might be worth it. If you really need to have more bass in something, you can do that. And then another issue might be because these are self-powered, that the power coming out of this, you might have to turn the volume down on these and then control the volume with a preamp, which, by the way, if you're getting any sort of powered monitor like this, I strongly suggest getting some sort of preamp. And as a matter of fact, actually, you might not need a preamp because if you do that thing I just said where you run the RCAs out of this and into these, the micas instead of the satellites, the Logitech satellites, you could control the volume of this with the knobby knob and it's a good knob so there you go. So that's a good way. Now I recommend personally getting these to the Logitechs at first, like if you're wanting to step into better audio, get the Logitechs because, you know, they're good. They're definitely good. I've had experience with speakers for a while now, not as much with headphones, but still, and they're good. They're not bad. It's just, I'm pretty sure they're not as good as the Micas, but they have a subwoofer, meaning if you save up money again, eventually, they're just about the same price if you get them from Logitech. So, I don't know, two paychecks later, you get the money back, depending on how much money you make. And then you can get these, the micas, and then suddenly you can run your micas, which is, I'm pretty sure, from everything I've seen, they're good powered monitors. You can run them now with a subwoofer. Now, I, the reason why... I wouldn't recommend getting like a bigger subwoofer is because first of all, at least in my experience, it's not super easy to find another type of subwoofer that has RCA pass-throughs. A lot of them have speaker level pass-throughs, ins and outs, and they act as a crossover. You know, they cut off the low end with a little knob and then they pass them to the subwoofer. But it's hard to find that with RCAs. This is like a first step, and then you can use this with this. Now, that might be a completely horrible idea for some unforeseen reason that I haven't considered, 
but it's to me it seems like a good idea now if you just have a whole bunch of money to spend you could go ahead and just get powered monitors that already throw out, throw out a lot of low end um let me think good powered monitors uh jbl lsr 305s they're like almost twice the price of these because you have to the, the micas because you have to buy them up separately or if you could find a bundle they have good low end at first i haven't owned a pair but i've listened to them uh, at other places now i'm pretty much done i pretty much finished the review a while back saying they're they're good they're okay they're not the best they're not the worst they're good for what they're designed to do speaker setup and powered monitors are really good for speaker setup for wait 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 hold on <laughs> these are good for desk desk setups sorry because of the self-powered aspect you don't need a um a separate amplifier because the amplifier is in this same with these the mic is they have an amplifier in them meaning you just plug them into the wall and as a matter of fact actually it's a little a little little tiny plug you plug them into the wall and they work also well, you gotta plug signal but you know and having a little tiny little tiny subwoofer you just place that somewhere on the desk and you have a 2.1 system for your desk with better speakers than you would have with just these and you also have a subwoofer meaning you have a little more bass if you need it uh you know and it doesn't have to be these any any sort of powered monitor with rca ends as a matter of fact you could probably actually do get a, a speaker amp and passive speakers and then just run the RCA outs of these into the speaker amp and then you know you got your preamp or whatever and bam it's this is like a stepping stone I don't know if I said that before but it's the first step if you if you're like me college student maybe not a lot of money you take gradual steps into doing things like this I'll try it eventually I don't have the money for these right now but uh, that's a good idea. Hey. So, I'm finished with this. I'm sorry if it's been a bit long. I just had a lot to say. Uh, take the review. Take it or leave it. Eh. Really, again, this is just me trying to organize my thoughts on these. They're good. I am not upset with these at all. Even though I wish that was a bigger driver, it doesn't bother me too much. I'm not a bass freak. Um, peace out, bros.